Good afternoon. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily Facebook Live. This is my daily exploration, conversation, information, inspiration, <laughs> or the shun words to help you in your life regarding relationships, regarding life itself. And this one is going to be a hodgepodge of ideas since it's a Monday starting things off with a new topic. Um, let me start off with my title so you know who I am again. My name is Barry Selby. As I mentioned, I am a best-selling author, speaker, and a relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And last week I did a whole bunch of series. I think I did six out of the seven days last week talking about feminine authority, which is a, a language I'm using now as explain women in leadership following their feminine heart. And today's topic is a in a way, it's a hodgepodge. I mean, I just threw three, put three words together because they, they alliterate. So, you know, I thought I'd put it in there. But it's really going to be fundamental about how I believe we can all, not just men, women, but men as well, can be aware of our own um, stuff. I'll use <laughs> this technical term. Meaning that we fall into traps and we get betrayed. There's one of the Bs. Um, because we betray ourselves. We don't stand in our own truth. So I want to speak to a couple of things that may be indicative, and particularly in the relationship conversation, because once again, it's a Monday, so there's a new news cycle, and talking a lot about the sexual harassment stuff that was going on, as well as some of the um, reactionary responses people have had over the weekend to various news topics, media outlets, and political things. So the, the other two Bs I want to throw in there and start explaining what I mean as context for them which is um, billboards and, uh, and what was the first one? Boundaries. That was it. Boundaries. Yes, that was the thing I was going to start with. Let me start with boundaries. That's the one I was, I was going to start with. Um, let me just say this. I would say that 90% chance if I'm talking, if you're watching this, vid, watching this Facebook Live, is you have poor boundaries. Sorry, let me say that slower. You have poor boundaries. What does that mean before you go? What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, there's a context, particularly a relationship. Now, I don't necessarily mean romantic one of those is a primary place to work in. But boundaries are a thing where we tend to have um, an uncertain boundary line where we feel comfortable, feel safe, and also feel respected. I'm just thinking, reflecting yesterday on some conversation I had, and I watched people who got into upset and hurt feelings, being resentful and feeling um, upset, distressed, because somebody, they weren't aware of it, somebody basically stepped on their boundaries and they didn't realize that's what happened. They just suddenly got affronted and, and, and hurtful. Now, this may help you if you've been dealing with sexual harassment, by the way, so I'm not going to say this is a situation that, that was, it wasn't one of those situations, but the same energetic could play out and the same Ability to change it and respond can play out. So listen closely. I hope I have what, I, what you need because I haven't got this scripted. First thing is that to know your boundaries is important to know for your own individual expression and also for your own ownership of your space, literally ownership of your space, which is the boundaries. A lot of us have personal space boundaries, which is where when somebody invades it, you feel pushed on and put on. They may come in for a hug and you don't want it, or they may reach and touch you on the shoulder, or they just, their, energy is, their energy is quite chaotic or dysfunctional or it's negative, whatever it is, and you just don't want them in your space. That's one boundary. But are you aware that there's two other big boundaries that we talk about, that I know about, that you may be unaware of, which is emotional and mental boundaries? Yes, you have emotional and mental boundaries besides the physical ones. Emotional boundaries basically are where somebody's, well, some ways I'll explain it, where somebody will get inside your psyche in a way, and stir up your emotions without even realizing that you're being provoked. That's because your boundaries on the emotional level aren't strong. Because if, you're, if you have emotional boundaries that are strong, they can't get in. They can't get through that boundary. Or, yeah, maybe visually not using the right props, I guess. But also, someone who, if your emotional boundaries aren't strong, you can be um, impacted by somebody else's emotional upset. Somebody else could be um, running their judgment on you. In fact, I had a situation come up recently working with a different client on the different, different, different work, works thing I still do where their um, emotional upset was attempt, they were attempting to, to influence me and include me in their panic because they were emotionally upset because something wasn't being handled. 
And I realized very clearly, 100% of the picture was, it wasn't my upset, it was theirs. Thankfully, I've done a lot of work in, in getting my own emotional boundaries free and clear. So that way, when they tried to hook me into their stuff because they were upset, I didn't buy into it. And there's a quote, there's a statement, of, I've used it before, and I think I've said it on Facebook Live, but I've suddenly used it in the conversation. Um, your lack of pre-planning does not constitute my emergency. That's a very important business term. You want to have that, that, you might have that quote of your desk at work when you work with people. Because if you're in a place where you fall into the, into the re reactiveness, where if somebody else is upset and panicking, a boss or a client or, an, or some other person, where you will react and jump in to help them, you may totally give up what you're working on. Now, I have that issue too that comes up once in a while for me, but not as, not as dramatically as you used to. I'm so clear now that when someone gets upset, my first response is to stay present, not get caught up in their um, typhoon or upset where it's going on because it's, it's a whirlwind of energy. So that's one. That's the emotional boundaries. So physical boundaries you're aware of when people invade your personal space. That's one way of putting it. There's other areas of personal, personal boundaries too. You know, somebody gets in your car without asking or somebody uses your things without asking. That's the physical stuff too because for some of you, you let people walk all over you when it comes to using your stuff, whether it's your computer, your camera, your phone, your whatever it is, and you don't stop them. So having healthy boundaries is a place of self-respect. And this, oh, let me come back. Uh, let me put that one right now. When you have healthy boundaries, mental, emotional, and physical, it's called self-respect. If you don't have those places in place, if you don't have those three things handled, you're not going to respect yourself, and other people won't respect you either. So this is important stuff to take note of. So yes, getting back to so that's two physical and mental. So physical and emotional. Mental is the third one. They're not in any order, by the way. Where we tend to get influenced, and this is something, oh, okay, yeah, this one just came up. If you watch the media and you're influenced by it, you don't have strong mental boundaries. You can be easily influenced. And this is, right, this is up right now for all the people in this context, what's happening politically, uh, emotionally, what's going on with the Me Too conversation as well, because there's so much upset and hurt feelings and righteousness that's coming out of what's been happening with the sexual harassment stuff, but also with the way the political system has been running our country, or should say, well, I won't say, <laughs> I was going to say how it's not running the country, but you know, you know what I mean. But the thing is, when we react to things, mentally react, mentally respond, or judge, or feel um, like, how dare they, that's where your boundaries, again, in the mental level, aren't healthy and strong. It doesn't mean that when your mental boundaries are strong, you're, in, you're um, Im Im immune, which is the way you are immune, but you get to respond, not react. That's the key difference, by the way. Yes, there we go. Respond versus react. When your boundaries are strong, especially mental and emotional, your ability to respond is healthy versus being forced to react. If someone pushes your buttons and you react, that's where your boundaries are weak. That's a great tell cell. So if that happens to some people around you, ex-partners, parents, Thanksgiving's coming this week, so be aware of that one, and people pushing your buttons and you react, either mentally or emotionally, guaranteed, that's because your boundaries aren't strong in the area of mental and emotional um, individuation. There's a fancy word, individuation. So it's clear that the way you, the, that's the that's the that's the uh, warning sign. That's the red flag that your boundaries aren't strong. So the question asks, how do you respond? The first thing is is you don't. To be simple about it, is when someone pushes on you. 90% of the time, especially when you go back to family, is they're pushing on you to get a response or a reaction. Actually, more a reaction because they want you to jump on that. When you don't, first of all, you foil their attempt. Secondly, you've got time to think. The whole thing about, you know, when someone provokes you and you, like, count to 10 so you don't get angry, it's kind of the same idea because what you're doing is taking time to disengage from the reactive automatic response that's inside of you so you can actually sit back and go, how do I want to respond to that thing, whatever that thing is? So the hooks don't get put into you, and you can just say, no, thank you. So it's a self-guided process. I mean, there's different ways of doing it. I don't have, I don't have a, whole, um, a whole smorgasbord or a whole list of things to do, but it's kind of the thing about taking time. Yes, taking a deep breath and taking, well, not so much taking, taking a deep breath and taking time to center versus take, taking a breath and take time to cool down, because it's not cooling down unless it's already too late and you've already got angry. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, you're missing the comments because these are on Facebook Live. The reality is, and so taking deep breath and taking time to cool down, I don't agree with necessarily because reality is, well, let me say, if that's the first time you've done it and that works, great. But your goal 
is to be able to take a deep breath and take time to center, because what you're going to, what the ideal is, if someone hit, at, um, triggers you on the mental, emotional, physical level, you get to stand clear, and then you get to center, because then you respond versus react. We react when we're off center. We react when we're out of, when we're out of balance. We react when we're not able to take management of our own emotional mature, emotional um, governance. There's a difference between sorry, there's there's a quali- qualification called emotional maturity or emotional mastery. I prefer emotional maturity because emotional maturity means you get to respond more in alignment with who you are than react to what's happening outside of you being triggered by something. So the question was so so how do you emotionally disattach you don't react? Ah, well that's some of the work I do with my clients, to be honest. For a lot of people their reaction, especially with Thanksgiving coming up, so since I'm in America talking to a lot of American audience. Thanksgiving happens on this Thursday. I talked about this with my, I emailed my list a few weeks ago, but I actually gave them some special coaching opportunities because of what's going on. For many people, for many people, going home for Thanksgiving is the most challenging time of year. Um, John Bradshaw talks about, um, if you think you're, you think you're evolved, or think you, I think, yeah, I think, I think, if, you, I think if you, you say, if you, if you think you, if you've evolved, go home for Thanksgiving, because it'll prove you're not. Because going home to Thanksgiving is like is reverting into a five-year-old and six-year-old age stage, but in a physical adult body. So you go into the house with your parents and your siblings and your uncles and aunts and everybody else, all that stuff is going to come up from you at five years old. Quite often it does. Which means that's the environment where trying to respond versus react is going to be most challenging if you haven't done any work before that to mature and grow up your younger um, self to a mature conscious awareness. And that's kind of the journey. So luckily you don't celebrate it. Well, the thing is, I mean, I'm from England, so I don't have family to go celebrate with. If I go home to England, there's no Thanksgiving, so it's not a point. I will go celebrate Thanksgiving with friends and with, with uh, close friends. I've got two, two celebrations this week to do, which is great. But that's different. That's chosen family versus biological family. But for many people, the biological family they go back to at Thanksgiving is where all that history and all that pain resides still, where they need, ideally, if they can, Make peace with it. I was going to keep triggering it every time they go home. So, you will work and have a glass of wine. If that works for you, great. <laughs> I love it. Come to LA. I got. I'm going to be doing stuff with some friends. If you want to come out to LA. Um, so, so I talked about just going back to the title I was talking about. But so boundaries. No, there was the three, boundaries. Ah, billboards. That was the other second one. And third one was um what was the other B? I forgot what the other B was. I'll come back to it. So billboards, I didn't get to that one yet. So billboards is simple but simply basically saying the signposts. The very big reminders, like when you go home for Thanksgiving, where you're gonna walk into a household and you're gonna have billboards in front of everybody, like this one triggers me, this one does that, or betrayal. Thank you, Dawn. Yes, I appreciate that. Yes, betrayal. I'll get to that one too. <laughs> I didn't know I started with that one. Okay, let me, let me, I'll put it back in sequence in a moment, so bear with me. So, the billboards are the signposts, because, to be honest, for those of you who get triggered on a mental, emotional, or physical level in somebody um, impinging on your boundaries, for how many of you is that not the first time it's happened with them? Let's be honest here. For most people, and I went through it myself, the number of times where the same person did the same thing to me and I still reacted was kind of like, I could have done better. That's the billboard. When it's happened that many times, you're going, okay, I know better than that. I can react better differently. I can choose to do things differently. And that's the billboard reminder, the signpost that you knew it was coming and you still reacted to it. It's almost like, yeah, come on, smack me around the head and I'll react to it. Next time, I won't let you do that. That's changing the billboard into a growth opportunity. So that's, that's the thing. So let me put, let me put, put betrayal back in the, in the conversation because I mentioned it at the beginning. So... You have healthy boundaries, or I should say if you don't have healthy boundaries, then you're going to get experiences like at Thanksgiving where you go home and deal with family stuff where they keep smacking you upside the head emotionally, mentally, or physically, metaphorically speaking, and you will then have a, ideally, reminder enough times to go, whoa, I don't need to do that anymore. That's the billboard side of things. Because if you don't deal with it again and again, basically, the third B, you've betrayed your own self. And if you betray yourself by not honoring yourself and respecting yourself, then you can pay the price by being 
the five-year-old person in the adult body at Thanksgiving dealing with all that crap from the family that you grew up with, which you don't want to deal with anymore. So perhaps I'll take this as a cautionary tale and reminder for you going forward this week to Thanksgiving, if that's your um, path for this week. But if you're going to see family or anybody who you've got familiar experiences with that doesn't respect you, and we all have those, don't we? So, so dealing with it, not avoiding. Yes, exactly. Yes, so dealing with it, not avoiding. So here's the three in the sequence very quickly. Again, reminder. So first of all, sorry, let's do it from the backwards for a change. Let's try the other way around. So you feel betrayed when you go home to see family. They say things upset you and triggers you and upset you and it doesn't feel good. The truth is you're betraying yourself because your billboards you've been seeing for the last 25 years when you go home to see family, you ignore them every single time. You betrayed yourself because the result is your boundaries were not clear in the first place. So work on your boundaries, heal them, as much build, rebuild them so you build self-esteem, self-support, self-respect and self-confidence. So that way when somebody out there, be it family member, friend, stranger even, doesn't influence or impact your boundaries on any level, mental, emotional, physical, then you won't even need the billboards anymore. In fact, the billboards will be signposts, smaller, more compact, so you see them, that will go, oh, watch this person's going to do that one. I don't need to deal with that. Thank you, but no. It gives you a chance to be discerning, to be responsive, and to be self-centered in a good way. So that's the reminder I'm going to give you. I'm going to make sure I get this done in time, so I've got a client call in a few minutes, so I'm going to get wrapped up on this. So that's the message I want to give you today. So, build, so boundaries, billboards, and betrayal. Consider that. If you need help in this area, this is an area I specialize in with my clients. So uh, your solution, you're not going by, mes um, by myself and I'm honoring myself. That's a good choice, Diane. Diane? Diana, because I can't see the... Diana. I didn't put my glasses on today because <laughs> I've got to do that. So I um, hope this helps you. So this is, this is a quick, quick tip, guidance, solution to help you have a great Thanksgiving, which I wish you well. I'll be doing more talks about that this week as well, probably. And also just to have a better way of living life so that you have more self-managed and self-ownership so you do not get impinged by the people's stuff. That's one of my skill sets too to help you with that. So if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. This is my daily Facebook Live as a summary. I'm just wrapping this up now. Um, thank you for joining me. This is number 172. Yes, 172 of these are out there. You're welcome, Petya, as always. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live. Um, I've done 170, 171 of these before this now. Wow. And you find all of these on my, base, on my business page on Facebook, on my YouTube channel, which is under Barry Selby, and also on my personal website, which is barryselby.com. Look at the video blog to see those as well. If you want help in this area, please reach out to me. You can find me on social media or you can go to my website and click on the chat button if you're looking for relationship help or the consult button if you want some business help. Yes, I've got for you two options. And again, share this out with anybody who you think might get value from this. Um, yes, 172. Yes, thank you, Amy. It's, it's been, uh, been a journey. <laughs> and there's more coming. So having said that, I want to sign off because I have to go do some other things and see my, talk to my client in 10 minutes. Um, if you want help and you want to get support, that's what I'm here for. Thank you for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with more fun and games of some sort or other. I'll come up with another topic. Um, and with that, thank you. So a reminder, by the way, always please... Um, oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm... Yes, I'm glad you joined me. Thank you, Diana. Um, so this is my daily Facebook Live, as always. I've got plenty. If you haven't watched my previous ones, you have a whole smorgasbord to watch. There's 171 before this. Plenty of different topics. You can scan through the titles and find ones that speak to you. Last week's was all about feminine authority. So if you're a woman in business a female entrepreneur, and you're feeling you've got some challenges, watch all of my broadcasts from last week. That will help you. And as a reminder, as always I say to my audience, please take care of yourselves. If you take care of yourself first, then you can take care of other people in that order. And I look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Thanks for all the input, the conversation, and for participating in my conversation. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.